Look at you, stuck in the web of procrastination and lacking discipline. It's time to admit that you've been avoiding responsibilities and it's holding you back. Stop sugarcoating your failures with these flimsy excuses. You know very well that laziness and distractions have been ruling your life. You've become complacent with mediocrity, choosing comfort over growth. Well, guess what? Real change demands discomfort, and you must embrace it. Recognize your lack of discipline has cost you precious opportunities. The time wasted cannot be recovered, but you can make amends starting right now. Deep down, you know you have untapped potential. It's time to unleash it and stop hiding behind your procrastination as an excuse. Procrastination is often the result of fear. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown. It's time to confront these fears and break free. Sure, this can might seem like a foreign concept to you right now, but it takes time to face the music and make discipline your new best friend. You've been avoiding accountability, but it's time to take responsibility for your actions. Hold yourself accountable for your progress or the lack thereof. Feel the weight of regret for all the time wasted and opportunities missed. Then feel your determination to change and make the most of every moment moving forward. Change won't happen overnight, and it won't be easy. But you're not looking for easy. You are looking for growth. Embrace the process, and you'll come out stronger. Oh, look at you, drowning the sea of indecision and inaction. Your inability to make choices or stick to a plan is pathetic. Stop trying to cover up your laziness with those pathetic excuses. Nobody buys them, not even yourself. Just think about all the potential you've wasted by wallowing in your lack of discipline. It's truly, truly sickening. You're nothing more than a slave to comfort and instant gratification. You can't even withstand the slightest bit of discomfort to achieve your goals. Your willpower is laughable. And your mind is even weaker. It's time to toughen up, buttercup, and take control. While you're busy procrastinating, the world just keeps moving forward. Your lack of discipline is causing you to fall way behind. You've become a master of self-sabotage, always finding ways to hinder your progress. It's time to break free from this vicious, vicious cycle. Congratulations, you've built a cozy nest in the land of mediocrity. How does it feel to be just average, or maybe below average? Way, way, way below average. You don't need calling. You need a reality check. Stop babying yourself and face the truth. You are weak. Enough is enough. Rise from the ashes of your weaknesses and become the disciplined, proactive force you know that you can be. Or don't. And stay exactly as you are. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. You might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree, but Tech Coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts! Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again! Tech Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Tech Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, 
because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. We the best. I appreciate you. Ain't believing us. Let's get it. It's time! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another Sunday afternoon episode of Software Explorations. I am your host, the one, the only, Tech Coach Ralph. And today we are going to continue our exploration of the popular automation tool named Playwright. We had part one last week where we started um, reading the documentation, setting it up, and we started automating Southwest Airlines, and we will continue with that today, all right? But before we get into any of that, we have to do our usual housekeeping. So first and foremost, first and foremost, shout out to the bag chasers Shout out to the Barbarians. For those who know, you know. For those who don't, you don't. All right? But we will keep pushing forward. We will keep winning. Shout out to all of you. An elite group of individuals who refuse to lose. By we do not lose. We do not miss. We just keep pushing forward and we will win in everything that we set our sights upon. All right. So shout out to that one more time. <laughs> Next. Thank you to all the new subscribers who are subscribing every day, who I hope to be adding great value into your lives. Um, you know, anything that you, anything that you need to know, leave me a comment, send me an email, all of that. Like any, any ideas, any questions that you have, if you, if you can't join the chat, leave a comment, you know, email me, whatever the case may be. And we will move forward from there. All right. All right. Next up on our list is our show schedule all right so what is our show schedule so of course we have sunday afternoons at 2 15 p.m eastern time we have our software explorations where we go through various different softwares on tuesday nights we have q a sessions where i will interact with you in the chat to answer any of your questions, or if you do not have questions that you, or that maybe you have questions that you don't even know of yet, right? I source questions and I answer those questions, which reminds me, I do have a comment based on one of my clips from the Q&A session that we can talk about before we actually get started to, because maybe I can offer a little bit more context on it, on what I was saying in that video, but, Q, um, Tuesday nights, 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have Q&A sessions. And then on Thursday nights, we have more software explorations because we need to know our software. We, we need to get it right. Okay. So again, again, Sunday afternoons, software explorations. Tuesday, Sunday afternoons at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time, software explorations. Tuesday nights at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Time, 
we have Q and A session, and then on Thursday nights at 7:15 Eastern time, we also have Q and A sessions. And then throughout the week, there are clips being dropped every single day throughout the week, so that um, you know, make it bite-sized, digestible. Make it bite-sized, digestible pieces of information for you in case you are not able to sit through the whole two-hour Q&A session. All right? So that is our show schedule. All right? Next thing, I just want to say that... I've been coming in contact with a few people in the past few weeks and I like the initiative that I'm seeing from them and I just want I just want those people who know who I'm talking about keep on pushing keep getting better um don't look at your situation for what's in front of you look at your situation for the way that you can use it to benefit you all right and everything that we do look for the benefit that we can get out of it and how we can use it to our advantage all right so keep in mind that and let me pull up this comment actually before we get started so this was on the video for the CICD I think I, I think that was released on Friday all right so let me find it So, go to it. All right, so I'm here, right? It says, hey, Ralph, appreciate your insight. A few other things I wanted to mention here. I think having senior devs slash engineers perform um, pull request reviews on other engineers' code or just another engineer to put eyes on new code functionality to catch things in the original engineer may have missed. On top of the reviews, having automated tests recheck existing functionality with the new changes and merging to a staging slash release branch with the stable code for the QA to perform the additional checks prior to release to catch things the automated test didn't catch. Broken UI, flows not working the way that it should, end cases, etc. What has worked specifically for me has been dev for the latest change that is still being fixed, adjusted, stage release branch for changes that will be cherry picked from to a production environment. Untested code being merged sounds like it could be a process issue where you are hoping for the best. Here is a change we are introducing. Hopefully it goes well. Then production goes down and then the stakeholders are angry as a result. This is a tough issue when you're in a small company and the engineering team is limited to the QA and the QA has to wear multiple hats. In that situation, smaller releases with the critical modules always being tested to ensure the standard workflow are checked on top of the new functionality. All right, so. Let me get let me get some clarity to it, right? Because I think and that was a video talking about the CI C D pipeline and um the whole like going through a series of checks before before um pushing like merging into production, right? I think the misunderstanding here is that um there's a, so there's a few misunderstandings, right? The first one is that believing that with a continuous integration, continuous development, continuous testing framework that um there is no human eyes taking a look at anything right um there like there's still going to be code reviews that are being done by the engineers and by qa and all that stuff right qa even has to write the the new test to to fit right during during development right qa is still testing um things locally Right, like it's like a, a hybrid of manual testing and of um, manual testing and of like running so running your automated regression test, um, like initially manual testing the new features and then adding it to the automation suite, right? But so to, to so to think that there is no human eyes ever touching on it, like the developers have to actually write the test. The, Q, the QA engineers have to review the um, 
the like create the test plans, the test scenarios, the test cases. They need to actually execute them, right? The part that CI C so so that's the so that's the the first misunderstanding I believe that's happening here, right? Um, the second misunderstanding is on top of the reviews, having automated tests recheck existing functionality with new changes and merging to a staging release branch with the stable code for the QA to perform the additional checks prior to release, right? So this is the problem, right? Um, you should be testing locally to start off. It's not like the developers write some code and then you just push it to the cloud and then you go, you, you spray and pray, right? No, it doesn't work that way. The way that it works is like you do your test, right? And you do them locally. And now when you push your test to, uh, to like a, a, an environment, whether it's development environment, whatever, or uh, the branch that's being worked on, now, there's, there should be a series of multiple checks, right? So there should be unit tests by the developers that's being ran locally before they even try to merge or push any code, right? Then you should have your automated um, tests, the regression tests, those should all be passing, right? And then, um, and then the new functionality that you wrote, those should be passing as well, right? And, and then may, like, if, if, you, if you're under the impression that um, you can, like, if you're under the impression that you can um, run automated tests and then you're, you're getting like broken UIs and flows not working the way that they should end cases, then I would say that the, the automated tests that, that are written simply aren't, um, don't have good coverage. That's how I would see it, right? And maybe you need to increase your, 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 your automation suite because you should be able to run your automation suite with confidence that the most critical areas of the site are going to are, are working successfully. Like the purpose of the automation test is to mimic how a like what a, a human would do, like what user interaction would do. It's following a flow that you created. So for automated tests to like not for you not to be confident in your automated tests, that is um, that is um, that's a bit concerning, right? Um, to be honest with you, in most cases, I am more confident in the automated test because it follows a strict series uh, like over and over and over and over again that uh, I have more confidence in the automated test than in, um, in someone manually testing the site. Right? Sure, they might find some things here and there, um, but I, I, I am confident that the automated test, if written correctly, are going to um, are going to find um like they're going to catch the most critical things faster than a human person can do it all right um so it says what has worked for me what has worked specifically for me has been dev for the latest changes that is still being fixed adjusted stage release branch for changes that will be cherry pick um to a production environment so here's the thing all right like cherry picking is not good practice when um so for those who don't know what cherry picking is it's like you have development um and like you and then you just like post certain things into into the production environment instead of like releasing the the whole feature or the branch or whatever like that right um or like you try to merge everything into one branch and then you just release certain features of it that's that's terrible practice it's it's very dangerous to be cherry picking um to a production environment so i think that's more dangerous than just releasing a, a branch that has comprehensive automated tests, unit tests, UI tests, API tests, all of that. That should be very comprehensive, right? Starting with the, the most amount of tests, according to our testing pyramid, should be UI tests, covers a majority of the scenarios. Then you go to integration and component testing, um, which could include your API tests, your business logic, right? And then you go towards your... Um, then you go towards your UI for like little things here and there, but a majority of your tests should not be coming from the UI, right? It should be through the API testing all sorts of business logic conditions to make sure that those are met properly, all right? So to continue, untested code being merged sounds like it could be a process issue where you are hoping for the best. So like I said before, I think there's a misunderstanding about what continuous integration, continuous testing is, um, or continuous inter in it's continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous testing, right? They all work together. Continuous testing is the part where every time you make a change, your automated tests, which include your UI tests, your API tests, your, um, your um, UI tests, they get triggered, right? And if they fail, then the merge does not go through. And if you are having your tests pass, but there's still 
um, like serious errors on the site that brings the whole thing down, then your automated tests are not good. All right. They're actually pretty bad. All right. So just want to make that point clear. All right. And um, so, yeah, so like you're like I, I have I have never, ever hoped for the best when doing a release when the majority of the release is focused on like not like the majority of the release is focused on the automated test suite to do regression testing it is impossible with the amount of development that's being going on that's going on at the speed that's going on to manually test a bunch of scenarios over and over and over again this is the reason that um they they, they brought in QA engineers to be able to optimize the process if we're going to just rely on manual testing, then we can just go back to manual testing. Right? And then we can waste a bunch of time, cost a bunch of money, and then we, we, um, and then we can take pay cuts. You know? So, um, so yeah. So, like, to be honest, um, it's, it, it, doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work like... Um, I think there's there's a major misunderstanding of maybe I don't know if 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 it's of what I said in the video or if it's of what CICD is actually is because there is no blind releasing and untesting code and hoping for the best. No. If you know what you're doing, like you are very confident in what you're releasing because you have put a series of 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 um, protections in place right from like requiring requiring approvals for your um for your prs right for your pull requests for your code reviews you need approval you need um certain conditions met you have you have code coverage checks being made you have so many different things like so many different things that you're using to configure the um to configure the, the the release process that to to believe that it's just untested code being merged is is just wrong all right. So I hope that helps clarify what I was referring to or what CICD is and how it works. But it is very far from what you've described in the comment. And um, and, you know, um, we can we can definitely talk about it some more. So always like, you know, send me an email if, if you need some more clarification on what I was referring to. And um, we'll, we'll go from there. But um, I just think there's a major misunderstanding between um, what the CICD pipeline is versus how to um, properly do quality assurance in an environment that uses um, CI and TD. All right. So that was that question or that comment being addressed. All right. So the next thing, if you, not have, if you have not done so yet, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friend, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff right because we are going to have a great time learning playwright together okay so how is the show going to go today all right the show is going to go in this way um, we're going to do 20 minutes working five minute breaks where i can address your questions in the chat or i will i have some code reviews to do today i think maybe two i have to check I have some code reviews to do today. I have, um, or if, if anybody has a code review that I'm supposed to do, put it in the chat. <clears throat> All right, put it in the chat if I have a code review that I need to do for you, and then I'll make sure that I get it done. Um, but I think there's some that I know about that I'll go look for. But if I am missing yours, let me know in the chat. Send me a message, all right? And, <clears throat> <coughs> but... Need some energy, all right? Need some energy. Please offer me your energy. I ask of you, please. We got some more goat fuel. I want to come out with my own energy drink. I don't think it exists yet, all right? I don't think that name exists. Should I share the name? Nah, I'm going to save that. All right, so let's get to work. We have our clock up. 
have my playwright here. I have well, not player. I have WebStorm here. I have my browser here, and we will get to work. So, twenty minutes on the clock. It's time to do. do, 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 do. All right. So when we last left off, we had playwright working here. So we had where we were going. So what did we do so far? We went to southwest.com, verified that um, Southwest Airlines was in the title of the page. We did um, page locator for the airport code origination airport code, destination airport code. And then we entered LGA, LAX. So we're going from LaGuardia to Los Angeles. And we have departure date. We're putting 9-8, which we'll keep for now. And then we have um, landing air, uh, the return date, 9-12, okay? And you click the search button, and then you verify that the title has select flights, and that's where we stopped, right? So what we can do, um, does anybody remember how to run this? All right, so let's find out how to run this. Let's go here and let's go here. All right, to run it, we need to do, and I want it to open up in the browser. So we're going to say, all right, so we just have to add headed. So let's do that. Why am I so far off the screen? Jesus, let's bring you, oops, not that one. Let's bring you back. All right, so we're going to go into our terminal and we are going to do npx playwright. Let's try that, Let's see what happens. Well, that didn't work. Oh, because I had a typo, that's why. Oh, okay, so let's try this test. It's only one test, so let's see if that works. Okay, that works, so Chrome should open up. And I have a bunch of browsers open up. Okay, cool. There was a way to specify one browser, wasn't there? Yeah. Oh, well, we just have them all run. So eight of them, or eight pass, one failed. Southwest booking flow has title. All right. So now we, we so we, we see. I'm gonna run it one more time, but um, this time with oh crap, with just Chrome. All right, so let's see how that goes. Something keeps failing for has title. All right, let's see what that is. All right, so let's see. Where did our test end? All right, let's see what's going on here. 
questions. We want this to ultimately pass, so we want to see, do we have any screenshots that we can see what's going on? All right, so let's try to figure this out then. Uh, let's see, so failed here. Unexpected error, book a flight, book a flight. So, okay, so it was looking for select flights, you got book a flight. All right, so let's go to Southwest. So let's, let's do it. So LGA, L, LAX, and then we do 982, and we're going to click search. And we should get select flights. So let's see what's going on here. Where are the ways to see the logs for Playwright? So we do. So let's try that same command with Oh, oh wait, uh, it's not what I want. Oh, let me see. All right, so we're gonna stop this here. Oops. And we're going to run it in, I think something is, all right, we're going to run it in that mode to see the, to see the, um, the browser actually doing the steps so we can have a better understanding of what's going on. Do I have to click something? I see. Okay. Let's see what's going on. I don't really see anything happening. Let's see. Oh, okay, so we found some errors. That's, so that's why it's failing, because there's some errors in the search. <sighs> Let's just make it a, I'm just gonna change it, just for the sake of being, we're gonna change it to Florida right now. Which, but, but, but I would assume um, California to, New York to California is a pretty popular test, but whatever. Let's go up and let's run it one more time. And I gotta press this play button. Okay. 
Let's see what happens now. Huh. That is very weird because it's going through the whole process, but it's not. Um, very strange. This was working the other day, remember? I have to think. Let's try a different date, maybe? And let's try to run it one more time. It leads me to the impression that Southwest isn't valid. It's like something, it's something's happening on our test room with Southwest that it's kicking it out to the, of the results. I don't see any reason that this wouldn't work. And while that's running, I will be right back to run and get something more to drink.
All right. So let's take a look at that. So we are here. And I don't know. I think it's something that's going on. With, like, I think Southwest is like blocking something or something like that. Because we found some errors. But why errors here? But not errors when you do it manually, right? Because sometimes they'll put these things in place to prevent you from being able to manually or from running automated scripts on it. But I don't think, I don't know. Let's, let's do some investigative research. All right, so let's see. So here... So here I have a bunch of stuff, but let me see. Mm, trying to think here. So, what would they be doing differently? I don't think this is a playwright thing. If I go and... that would mess up the plans for automating Southwest, but we can always pivot if we have to, so not a big deal. Let's see. Let's see. Fill in the date. How do you do a, uh, let, me, let me add some time in between it. Um, What's the equivalent for thread sweeping JavaScript? That would be the closest thing is a it's so complicated. All right, so let's see. Wait for seconds. Oh, weird. Mm, let's see. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens here. So here, I'm just trying to put this code to add a little bit of a delay so I can see what's going on. And we will go with 5,000. Let's go with the Chromium project. Oh, this time it passed. So some, so I think it had to do with the speed that it was entering the. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add another delay just so we can see the final page. And this is how, like, this is how I, I troubleshoot when I'm automating. Like I'm, I'm adding delays and stuff like that to see what's going on. Um, in the code review that I did the other day, uh, I was telling the person who, who submitted that not to use thread sleeps in their code because it's not good for it's not good practice for um, for writing the code but sometimes you you put them just so you can see what, what's going on and then you take them away and you use the proper way to um, lunch break lunch break 
All right. So then you use the proper way to um, be able to to like you're using like explicit weights, implicit weights instead of just like a, a hard um, wait time in there because those are never really accurate. So we're gonna do we're going to add some time. We're gonna add that five sec. Let me add ten seconds, right? And then we'll run it and we'll take our break, right? Ten seconds. And let's run it one more time. Oh, it failed again. So it passed the last time, but now it failed this time. So, uh, we'll keep, let's see. That is weird. I have, I have an idea. I'm going to add like that 10 seconds in between because it's not, it's not working. It's just maybe it, when it, when it checked for the results, happened so fast that it thought that it um that it got it so let's do it like this i'm gonna add 10 seconds before it does the validation to see what happens when um you wait 10 seconds and if the page still changes and there's something wrong with the page and i might just choose a different website because it's not worth um trying to troubleshoot southwest airlines all right cool so yeah we're going to we're going to pivot to another site um because no, wasting my time with South, Southwest Airlines, um, not getting their act together. But time for a break. So we are here and put our five minutes up on the clock. All right. So don't believe anything in the chat, but... In our first break, we can look for some jobs on LinkedIn because I know a lot of people are looking for jobs. Um, and we can assist in the search to see what is available out there. Okay, so let's do it. All right, so let me pull it up. Let's go to this one. All right, so. All right, so let's see. Let's look for. I keep looking for jobs in Orlando. Ah, shoot. That's not what I want. All right, this is how I do it. All right, cool. Let's see what's out there. Engineering lead test automation. Let's see, bachelor's degree in computer science, seven years or more in QA engineer role. Hybrid, Winter Park. Okay, so what does Stonex do? So yeah, like I said, the first thing I, I do, I go and I check the basic qualifications. Let's go, let's filter down to entry level or associate. Like I always say, like, um, the way that the resumes are set up, they can make or break you, you know? Got to be careful with that. Uh, I'm going to add software in front of this to make it more related to what we're, look to what we're looking for. So uh, SQA analyst, release manager, small company, Remote. Mm, let's see here. Five years of quality assurance, entry level. Is it like it's funny when you entry level and then five years of, of five years of um, testing experience, right? Five years of five years of QA testing experience. I don't know how they come up. It's like they, they don't pay attention to what they're to what they're um, setting up here. You know. All 
Let's see. So let's choose on site. Zero jobs for on site. Imagine that. Let's do. Q engineer, right? See how um, it's crazy out there. Like it's it's. Entry-level software engineer. Interesting. Well, that's interesting. I think we found one. I think we found one. <laughs> 85 applicants reposted one week ago. Oh, well, this is entry-level software engineer. And that is how the cookie crumbles. Let's see what a full stack developer is looking like. Alamante Springs, 211 people applicants. Website quality assurance engineer. Part time. Get a move on. Back to work. Chop, chop. Let's go. Come on. Get a move on. Get back to work. Back to work. Back to work. Mm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Do one more look on this one and then we can move on and get back to work. All right, cool, 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 cool. So let's go here. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're going to pivot to another website because um, Southwest does not want to play along today and we're not gonna waste much time on it because what do we care about Southwest, right? We're not going to beat a dead horse. We are going to just move on to a site that is more functional. So what site should we move on to? Let's see. So let's keep with the, let's keep with the um, flight stuff with the um, airlines. Uh, let's go with, let's try, let's do JetBlue. Why not JetBlue, right? Let me see here. Okay, so we're going to So we're gonna do this. We're going to say, you know what, screw you, Southwest Airlines, we're going to fly with JetBlue because you are not working. Alright, so we're gonna accept these cookies. And all right, so let's change our locators. All right, so we're here. We are, so actually we're here. Dead blue. It's, it's pretty much the same flow that, we're going, that we were um, mm -hmm. doing for Southwest. We'll just make adjustments as necessary. But we are going to start our timer, of course. Let's go! Let's go! So we're taking um, the flights and we're going to do inspect. And we are going to take, let's see, what do they have available for us? Well, that's terrible looking code, isn't it? Let's see. Let's see. All 
What is this input box? All right, so let's try. Let's try this um, CSS. And that is a, what is a dot city selector? So let's just run this to see if the code is actually going to work. All right, so we'll do this one and we'll do This is going to be here and go here and here. Okay, so you can take this off. You can take this off. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So let's just see if these, um, if the locators are going to work in the first place, all right? So if we stop this and we run it again. Oh, I forgot to change the website address to JetBlue. So, we are going to stop that. And we are going to scroll up over here and we're going to change the website address to jetblue.com. And I guess it's going to be jetblue in the domain name. All right, let's see what happens. All right. So we did all of that. Mm, let's see here. Can rename that to error element is not an input. Okay, so it's not an input. So we need to go here and find the input. So here, another one, Oops. not that one here. We want to go to, uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, all right. Input. So just input after this That's why knowing your CSS selectors and your X paths are so important to know well, so you can be able to Try to target anything that you're looking for. Well, that's not it. So, control Z. And let's give that one more shot. Ah, it might be that cookie thing that's blocking stuff. Let's get this accept cookie thing out of the way. So, all right, so this one is, it's not getting to the fill date side because it's probably because that um, cookie. So let's find out what we're going to do. So. What I'm going to do is I am going to open an incognito browser and we're going to search for jetblue.com 
And in here we're gonna find what that accept cookie thing is. And we're going to say, we're gonna copy this and make sure that div ID Okay, there's that. And now we have to find the button. So we go to button or not, no button. So a, a call. Here, oh, ex wait, that should work. A dot call. Mm, let's see here, and this is inside the. Let's see here. Hmm, a call. All right, so let's take this up. See where this is. So this is, ah, okay, this is up here. So I need main content then. And they have, all right, so, oh my goodness gracious. All right, so div. main content and then that takes the let's see here let's see if we do a dot call okay so let's try that Uh, let's see, we're gonna put that, we're gonna, let's put it at the beginning, right? So, uh, let's do here. Uh, cookie, or cookie, yeah, cookie, all right, let's do that. And we're gonna do here. Mm, let's see. Page dot locator. Main constant a call. And then we want to click that. All right, so we have that created. And we're going to say, well, let's take this out and we say, cookie link. Uh, click and they shouldn't be because all right so what let me see make sure we have this right okay so that looks good let's run our local host again and see what happens oh. Now let's go. Let's see what's going on. 
Oh, how did that get over there? This should be ahead of it. Should be after this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Alright, so now it's running. Let's see what happens with that. Let's see if it clicks it.
Lunch break. Lunch break. Just realized I was muted the whole time, but you saw what I was doing. Um, so pretty much what I was doing was um, doing the iframe. So I'm trying to get into the iframe in order to click on the accept button. Uh, so let me fix that. So what happened here was I I put the ID of the iframe, but it's not correct. Um, so what we're going to do we're gonna go here, right before we go to break, I am going to get the so we're gonna do this, right? Iframe, and then we go here, here, and we're gonna do ID, and which one is it? Is it like this equals, it's one of these. I always confuse the two. Let's try this one, okay. So this should go into the frame. So let's go back real quick. And let's go into here. Oh, all right, so let's go like that. Yeah, let's go like that. So the goal is this goes into the iframe of pop frame. Uh, it starts to pop frame. And then it finds the locator for P dynamic button but let's see how that shows up here all right so it doesn't show up properly so what we want is uh so here what we want is a this is an anchor link yeah so we want this to be all right so we want a div here Okay, so now we have what we want to click on. So our goal would be, so what we want to happen right now is it clicks on the, um, it goes into the iframe and then it clicks on the um, accept all cookies so it can continue with the test. Yes. Yes. All right, let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Cut it. This would have been so much easier if Southwest decided to cooperate with us, but we can only do what is given to us, so let's go. All right, there it goes. Cool. So we got in there, at least. So maybe we'll have to... Oh, I see what the problem is. Um, as you can see right here, something's wrong here. So we need this one for the destination. So I didn't get it on that one. But so let's go to before we take our break. Just want to get this. We want to get past this part, right? We don't. We don't want to just keep. We don't want to just keep the, um, we don't want to just keep this here. Like when we get back, we just want to go straight to um, going further in the test. And we don't want to just um, get stuck here because I think we've wasted plenty of time because Southwest decided to turn its back on us. So let's click on that. We go here and what is this one going to be? That is going to be 
What level is that at? Dot city selector. So up here, two airports. So let's just, oops, copy that two airport, put it in here. And then once it fills this one in, fills that one in, we want to be able to, let me see what else is there. Depart date. So let's just update this real quick, right? And then we'll go to break. Because uh, I just want to get to the next page. Uh, I don't want to keep going back and forth with this nonsense. All right. So let's see. So, we got, so let's do our LGA. Let's do our LAX. And let's do our departure date. So they have a very interesting breakdown, but we will make use of it. So here, and we're gonna say this data QA ID depart date. And for, what is this? That is, okay, so here we go. All right, and go up here. Just to finish it out. All right, so let's copy that. It is going to be our, and then we need to do the input field for it. So back here, place this in here for our departure date. And just do a quick look of what our return date is. And that's just going to be return date input. Okay, cool. So Okay, so here we have this right here, and we're just going to put return date input. And as you see the format that you would enter the date in, or let's see what the format, if you click on this, let me see if I do 0908. Okay, that should work. So we will do, so let's try, we'll leave it as that and see what happens. And let's do a quick run and then, oh, let's do the search flights button as well. So when we get back, we can get to the next page and not have to continue dealing with this troubleshooting button. So, uh, all right, so button. And you get to see how we search for it. So if you haven't noticed, right, the selectors that you use, I, I always say how important the selectors are, right? The importance of the selectors is um, they work like regardless of the of the framework, the testing framework framework that you're using, they all work the same, right? Um, so you need to you need to have like you, you need to be very good at choosing your selectors. Let's just do that and let's do search. And we are going to validate the title is taking a long time to load. And it is going to be, so let's leave it as select flights for now, okay? And let's give it a run and then we will come back. We will go to our break and come back after that. All right, so let's go for that, boom. We are running the test. that oh, it didn't enter our it didn't enter our LAX but we got everything else in there so that's good all right cool so this is gonna fail because of that but let's go to break all right so five minutes on the clock and Let's go here. All right, so 
Hey, Melissa, how are you doing? <laughs> Happy to have you here. So your question is, what exactly is the functionality of Playwright? So Playwright's functionality is to, it's a testing framework. It's like Selenium, um, but based in JavaScript, where you are, um, like the, the way that you see we're automating the JetBlue flight, um, JetBlue um, like process where you're selecting a, a, a plane ticket, a flight. Um, so it's pretty much what it does. It's like Selenium. It goes through the it goes through the process of um, it goes through the process of like of an actual flow to test it. So just like Selenium, but we're just trying out a different one, a one that's based in JavaScript. Um, they have like there's there's many different frameworks. So I just wanted to try this one out because I've always heard people talking about it and see how it works. Uh, I still I still prefer Selenium, of course, because I've been using it forever, but that is neither here nor there. All right. So great question as always. All right. Let's continue with our job search. Let's see. So let's see what there is. It's not going. All right. Let's see what's going on over here. So this one looks, so yeah, we saw this one. This one looks promising um, for entry levels who are trying to get into the industry. But, but you know what? Forget that for now, right? And then on our next break, we will do the, um, the code review. But, Somebody sent me a resume yesterday, right? And um, so somebody sent me a resume yesterday, and I'm reviewing it, and it, I don't even know how to how to describe it, right? Because the problem is, I know that they didn't write the the resume themselves because in the program that they're in they get resume writing assistance, right? But the problem is the way that, the way that these resumes are being written, um, it's, like, it's the same thing that I keep seeing over and over again. And it, it's just done in a way that um, it makes it seem that you have like absolutely no work experience whatsoever. Um, if, if, if I was hiring, right? And I come across a resume that, um, I come across a resume that it shows like you've only been working for like the past three months. <laughs> what what is the hiring like? What are, what are the recruiters and and the hiring managers supposed to do with that, right? It's it really it really it really like kind of bothers me and hurts me like that I keep running into the same situation over and over and over again, because it's like these places are supposed to be like trying to prepare the, trying to prepare people to go out into the market and work. But it really feels like that. Um, they like, there, there's like a cookie cutter factory that's being, that's being, that's, it's like, it's like, the, <laughs> it's like the, 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 the page object factory where it's just like, producing the same thing over and over again and it's, it's just not it's not um it's not sufficient right so gonna move on back to work chop chop let's go come on get a move on back to work back to work back to work so now i'm in the position that i have to go back to this person and be like all right 
this is this is what your resume is missing this this was bad advice this is like that this is like and and break it down all the way down to um even giving a new strategy of how you're gonna have to get to where you want to be right I honestly don't think that is fair to these individuals. But like I also said, we have to take accountability for not properly preparing, not doing what we're supposed to do, right? So keep that in mind. Um, I, I, I don't like having those type of conversations because it's like I'm bursting a bubble because like they have they have um, they have like these high hopes and stuff like that to get somewhere and then I'm like well you're not adequately prepared to get there you're gonna have to do all these other things right so anyways keep that in mind like keep keep just keep that in mind right you have to make your like I always say you have to make your resume something that you would want to learn more about right you have to make it sound intriguing that's oh I want to learn more about this person but um, you know, I feel like I keep getting the same resume over and over and over again, just with a different name on top. And if I feel like that, imagine how the recruiters feel that you guys are sent or you guys are submitting resumes every single day, but they're just like the same cookie cutter resume with barely any experience on there. But then you're applying for jobs that require like five years of experience. You're like, you're going to need a new strategy to get to where you want to be. You're not going to go be able to go straight, just go straight that path, right? It's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be easy. You know, and now I'm put in the position to have to tell you the truth. But I'll tell you the truth, but, you know. So, anyways, next break, code review, and then we'll be, um, let's try to see how much we can get done on um, JetBlue, right? So, let's get to it. It's time to do, 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 do. Right, So, let's go to our code. And there was a problem for the departure. This should be LAX. And let's put a weight in there. Mm, so let's move this delay up to here. And then I'm going to say a weight delay five seconds again, right? Just to test it out. And then we can look in Playwright to see if they have like the wait times that, um, that you'd get in like selenium and stuff like how to do the web driver weights and stuff like that if there is a version of that in playwright so it's running we're going to click that lga let's see if it clicks all right lax all right 915 now let's see if it puts in our return date okay ah oh, so when you put in the return date it clears out Oh, I see what's happening. So it's all right. Got it. Okay, cool. So let's just let's gonna say, let's transition over here. Uh, let's see if we can fix this. Okay, so we are here. We're here. And let's go here. So we need to be able to click on this. And let's go here. All right, so now. We are, so where is that Fort Lauderdale part? Let's click this Fort Lauderdale. So let's do this. We're, we're just gonna click on the first in area because the goal is, it doesn't really matter where you're flying from. We just need to get a, um, we just need to get something selected, right? So, ooh. Oh, okay. Typo. All right. So div in area. All right. Perfect. So we got that and we are going to, so we're, now we're going to add a click to click on the in area. So we're going to fill in LGA and we're going to say, oh wait, 
page dot locator. And we're gonna say dot click. All right, so we got that. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. So, you know what? I'm just gonna define this right here as a in choose departure location, right? And then it's just gonna be that, right? So that way we do not have to write the same code twice. We can just do choose departure location, or not departure, but choose, choose airport, choose flight location. So like that, right? Because that way it's not only for the departure, it is for the actual flight. So we can do it here, right? And then we can reuse this code over here. All right, and now, so we might not even need this, but we'll leave it for now, right? So now, if we run it again, let's see what happens. So accept the cookie. What? What failed? All right, so. Let's throw in a little weight in between it so we can see it work. Let's do the same thing over here. And let's see what happens. Just oh, we're here. Okay, cool. LGA. Oh my goodness, what's going on with this? So flight, choose flight location. That should work. So here, and we go here. That should work. that feeling all right let's see why that's feeling so strict mode oh that's, that's stupid because in in selenium you should just click the first one that's oh, that's ridiculous all right what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna change it to xpath and make it choose the first one so Let's do div. I do not like that whatsoever. At class equals in area. All right, cool. So you see how just by updating this one by itself, it's gonna up, it's gonna work for both of them. So that's pretty cool. But oh, and we need to do the first one. All right, there we go. So now let's go back and run it and see what happens, All right? So, uh, and I'll go back and show you the code that I use so it would um, choose the first one, All right? And waiting for locator, all right? So let's confirm that. All right, so this is the code that I wrote. I wrote an XPath and I said, find the div with the class of an area the first one of it. So if we go here and we go to div at class equals an area, it should find that one. Oh, okay, so then we need, because there's three of them, we need one. Should find this one. So why did that not work? Just go back here.
That doesn't make any sense. All right, let's, so let's put um, LGA in here, right? And if we go to, oh, I know why. It's because of my fault. So what I want to do is over here, when writing, when writing XPath, when you're writing XPath, you want to have it like that. Now it's gonna find one of one, and we're gonna avoid the same problem. So if I go here and I say that, just like that, it's going to find only the first instance of the div that has an in area, and it'll do it for both of them. So when we run now, run now let's see what happens all right cool okay something's happening okay okay now we got to this page. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, test them out. 30, 30. All right, so we are making progress. Okay, so let's remove, let's try removing all these wait times, see what happens. Run it one more time that way. See if it's able to progress. I don't know what this test time out of 30 seconds is, but you know, figure it out. Okay, let's take this one out as well. Take that one out, take that one out. All right, let's see what happens with this before we continue with the sh with the with the test, okay? So let's go here. Picture this is so annoying. Um, all right, so here we are, and let's give it another run. All right, so we are actually getting to the next page, which is good. All tests pass. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now let's select some flights, right? Let's go back to this screen. And let's go. Let's just follow the one that they did. So it's um, here. And then LAX. The first one is Burbank. We're going to choose Burbank. We're going to say 15 to the 18. 15. Jeez. 15 to the 8th. Jesus Christ. 15th to the 18th. All right, who search flights? And this is pretty much the flow that you go through when you're writing automated tests, right? You have to like get all these little configurations down to get it to work properly. So here we are, we are going to um, click the first departing flight. And we, I would just click on the whole thing that houses it, all right? Let's see, how far up can we go? I guess we could do C first if we had to. Mm, let me see, what can we use here? Not the best selectors. Huh. 
maybe I'll just do seafarers. But if there's multiple fairs, then that would not work. All right, what we're gonna do, we're going to use, we we'll use this, all right, so, let's do it for now. Let's see what happens, div, span. And we're gonna say, so we're gonna do, all right, we're gonna use a xpath. at our dot c pairs div class c fares mm, why is that not finding anything Let's see, why is that not finding anything? Div here. Let's try to take the div up. No. Ah, because there's a space in front of it. All that matters. You know, there we go. So let's get the div back in front. And here we are. We have our one of one. And we are going to go to. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Back over here, we're gonna say so we have to see the fares. Mm -hmm. All right, and then click. So if they click on see fares, now they can click on the first. Uh, Let's do the first blue basic. And here we are. It is so weird that there's no, um, they don't really have any serious IDs in here. All right, so let's do this one. But there's probably going to be more of these. Yep, there's three of them, and then we're going to get the same error. So we do have to specify the first one. Something cool that would be that I would do is like make it select a random one between the three. So every time it runs, it has the opportunity of choosing a different fare to book. That way, you'll be testing um, all the random. You'll be testing different. Um, you'll be testing different um, flows, right? So or different types of. Um, what would you call those? Travel plans? I don't know. Whatever you call it. All right. So div. And you have. Technically, it's supposed to be like only one ID on a page. So for them to be putting three, are they putting three? Yep. That's not best practices, JetBlue. But we're going to do it as XPath. And we need a single quote here, single quote there, close. And we go back here and we're going to select the departing flight. Locator. And then we're going to do click. So after you do this one, oh wait. I have to do the first one so we don't get that same error as we got for the other one. All right, so we got the first one selected. Oh, you didn't see that. So in here, I added the one to, so we're, we're doing seafarers. We're gonna click on that. And then we're going to, um, we're going to click on the first fare that is in our list over here. 
the first thread that, that is over here. So let's just, um, okay. So select your returning flight. Uh, we're gonna do seafarers again. So my strategy is always to make it work and then uh, make it better, all right? Because I could like be doing all this fancy stuff and it, it barely works. And then we end up wasting wasted a bunch of time. So we're not going to do that. We're going to get it to work and then we're going to make it better. So see fares. And then you click on the first one again. Let's make sure that this is still a working one. All right. So let's go back over here. So what I just did was I added the see fares and the fare details again. So it can do that for the returning flight, right? We can always optimize it later, um, but let's see, see fares. Let's make sure that works in the browser. Yep. All right, cool, cool, cool. So let's, so the last step would be, let's say we click on this. we will have to accept the restrictions that are presented to us. But let's, let's stop right there, let's run it, see what happens, okay? So let's go here. Let's give it a run. Let's give it a run. Lunch break, lunch break. All right, okay, oh, that was nice. That was very nice. So everything worked up to that point. So when we get back, we are going to accept the restrictions and um, finish up these steps, right? Because these steps were, were catered to Southwest, but we're going to adapt them to for JetBlue. And we'll get to the point where we, I think we're gonna fill out the form. I think, I think I will leave it up to you to fill out the form. Um, but I will get to at least to um, this spot right here, right? So let's go here. All right, let's see. Nothing here. Okay. All right, let's see. So we are going to start our code review shortly. sucks move myself a little bit on that when we come back all right cool so let me pull up github and we'll start our code reviews Five minutes on the clock. All right, pull requests. All right, so here we are. We are. All right, so we did this. We did this code review um, on. 
Thursday. They submitted it with updates for with changes. So we are going to do uh, some more code review on this one, and we'll see what what's there. All right, so all of these are outdated. Mm, let's see, where is the changes? Let me see. Uh, let's see here. Pages, package rename to pages per naming conventions. So let me see. Uh, I think you misunderstood what I meant. I said I would put pages in lowercase as it is a package. Am I missing something? Hold on. Everything still looks in, in, in uppercase. Hmm. What am I missing here? Let me see, let me see what's going on here. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me check the second commits. Oh, this is bad. This is not the safest XPath. All right, so that is not a good XPath. It is so easy to be broken, um, like especially over here, right? Uh, I would I would never um, recommend this XPath to be used. So let's go with that. Okay, so that's good. Alright, so that's good. That's good. That's good. This is good. I think that was mainly the changes that had to be made on this one, so let's see. Pages. All right. Let's see here. All right. So, okay, good, good. I remember we mentioned about this um, web driver weight, and you were able to implement it. So, shout out to you for that. <laughs> Great job. Great job. Very good. Uh, let's see. Keep looking. Okay, so far so good. Mm, very good, all lowercase, separated by underscore. All right, well, that one is pretty easy to do. Do I have a question? So I'm going to approve this because it's just a minor XPath recommendation that I made, nothing serious. So I am going to approve this code review. Cool, awesome, great. Changes approved and you are good to go. All right, all right, any other? Let's see here. Get a move on, back to work, chop chop, let's go. Come on, get a move on, back to work, back to work, back to work. So that we got that code review. Let me see if there's any other code reviews I need to do. Let's see. 
Oh, there's no pull request open for this. Okay. Thought there was. Let's see here. Well, let's see. Melissa says, so what exactly are you searching for on your tests right now? Uh, so the test with Playwright that I was doing, it was just to go through the purchasing flow of an airline ticket. Um, we tried to do it with Southwest earlier, but it was giving us some weird, weird errors, and I didn't want to waste time on Southwest, so we got it to work on JetBlue. And right now it goes all the way up to the point of... Um, choosing the you choose the returning flight or you choose a departing flight and you choose a return flight and then you um and now we're getting to the point where it, like you will say continue with the purchase and go from there but i think we're going to wrap it up here for this afternoon right and then next next sunday Hopefully JetBlue doesn't treat us the way that um, Southwest did us did treat us because we would have been done if we didn't have to go through all this config like all wasted time on JetBlue and then had to figure out how to navigate through the Jet the JetBlue site. But I think we're in a good spot now, where when we come back we're just going to have to um, go through these steps of filling out the form because I could leave it up to here and then say all right now you do the rest. But no, I want to do the whole thing. I want to be able to. Fill out the form and get all the way to um, as far as possible, right? And see how that works. So that is the plan for next weekend. We are going to leave it at that right now because of the technical difficulties that we had with Southwest Airline. All right. So on that note, let me do one last check. And let me see here. All right, so lastly, Melissa says, oh, I understand. Thanks for your explanation. It is my pleasure to explain. And oh, and here's the thing, right? If you want to be the best um, web developer out there, then you also want to be able to test your, your work. And that includes doing unit tests. It includes using, um, it includes unit tests. It includes, um, automated tests where you're testing your application of, of what's happening and stuff like that. So this is, this is very, very important for those who are learning, um, who are learning web development, right? So, so you, to know how to use these tools because in the real work environment, it's going to be very, very useful and handy for you to be able to um, also automate some of the testing of the work that you're doing. All right. So great questions as always. And um, you know, if you guys have any questions, any comments, any feedback, let me know, and then we will work on that, all right? So if you haven't done so yet, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you can know when we go live, um, which is Monday, or when we go live is Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, um, or when I drop the pre-recorded content, which is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we can go from there, all right? But this has been another episode of Software Explorations where we went through Playwright, um, give it a try, right? It's like, th this, was, this is my second time using Playwright. My first time was last week, Sunday, and you see how I'm like going through it, figuring it out. Luckily, um, it's, it's pretty much the same exact concept. I already know how to choose selectors, um, all of that. I, I know how, like, how to create a test case. So I'm able to navigate myself through it and just look, at, look up the documentation when needed, but give it a try. Like, what I take this advice right if you want to if you're if you're thinking about doing something or learning something um stop thinking about it and just give it a try do it right go take that go, go take a, a a um intro course somewhere for some random thing right um or read it get the documentation and just follow along find a udemy course follow along and just do it and then you, you're gonna see how your mind starts to work and how you start getting new ideas and everything like that okay so that is what I want you to do. Just do it like like Nike says. Just do it. Get your get your hands dirty. Do some work. And then 
Now you're going to start thinking, you're going to have questions, and we can go from there. But that, that's it. I will see you on Tuesday night, and look out for the Candid Conversation video dropping tomorrow. And that is all, my dear friends, family, my bag chasers, my barbarians, and any, anyone else. I will see you next time. This is Tech Coach Ralph, signing out. You might think that getting into the IT field is impossible without a computer science degree, but Tech Coach Ralph is here to prove you wrong. Get ready for some jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into this lucrative industry. Listen up, tech enthusiasts! Are you ready to break through into the IT field, but feel like you need a computer science degree to make it happen? Think again! Tech Coach Ralph has some exclusive, mind-blowing secrets to share with you. Get ready to be blown away by his jaw-dropping revelations on how to break into the tech industry without a computer science degree. So get your notepad ready, because Tech Coach Ralph is going to change your life forever. Buckle up, because you're about to embark on a journey to success in the IT field. Hear me, warriors of the north. Today we have tasted the sweet nectar of victory. Our foes are now defeated, and their lands are now bowed before us. The gods themselves have favored our glorious deeds on this glorious day. We have shed blood, sweat, and tears to claim this land. Our in the spirit, our unyielding determination. These are the very essence of our people. <laughs> Let's believe our ancestors rejoice in the halls of Ahana. For today, we have added to their eternal glory. Our victories will echo throughout the ages and our names will be etched in annals of history. <laughs> but men must not forget the prayers and pay, the brothers and sisters we lost. They now feast in the hall of our forefathers watching over us with pride. Their sacrifice has paved the way for this moment of triumph. <laughs> Having son break his conquest, let us all remember that our journey is far from over. More than awaits our conquest, more battles upon us forth. And the fire in our hearts burn ever brighter, for there is no limit to what we can achieve. To them who dare stand against us, and them tremble in fear, for they shall witness the fury of the northern storm, the wrath of the untamed barbarians. Today we sing our victory. Tomorrow we set our sights on new horizons, on trying to man where our banners will fly high. We are Vikings, we are barbarians, we are masters of conquest.
We the best. I appreciate it. Let's get it.